So, Dana, we could throw a number of darts on the map already today and find you countless stories, all right? I just want to set up the Senate for you where we think we stand right now. Then I'll show you a little bit of story about what's happening in the House. I'm going to bring in Brett right now, uh, who just uh, joined us as well. This is Nevada right now, okay? Uh, you've got some outstanding votes still, but Laxalt, the Republican, is hanging on to a, a slim lead right now. There's a little bit of vote out down here uh, in Clark County. That's Las Vegas, estimated voting about 80 percent. OK, so roughly maybe 20 percent of the vote in Clark County is still out uh, up here in Reno in the Washoe area. OK, so more of a percentage is out. And Laxalt was doing better, by the way, in that part of Nevada uh, than he was down in Las Vegas. I mean, real critical move here now if Republicans want to try and fight for this uh, majority in Georgia, perhaps a month from now, okay? That's on the Senate side. Much more detail throughout the show here. This on the House side. I think it's a very interesting story. It's developing. We talked about crime in New York State. We talked about Lee Zeldin doing really well um, against uh, Kathleen Hoka. Let me bring that up for you. He lost, okay? But look at the margin. Mm -hmm. Look, in, in New York, Dana, you know, listen, mm -hmm. Republicans, they haven't come within 20 points in, in two yeah. decades. Uh, so he came within five at the current mark. If I go to the House lineup, however, New York 3, north coast of uh, Long Island, north shore of Long Island here, that's a flip. All right, New York 4, south shore of Long Island down here, Desposito, the Republican, leading right now, so that could also uh, be a flip. Same part of New York, okay? Moving up here, the Hudson River Valley, Sean Patrick Maloney, uh, head of the DCCC, trailing Mike Lawler. Lawler's going to join us next hour. We'll get his state of the race here. If he hangs on, that too uh, would be a flip. Let me move a little bit more down here. Uh, 18, if... If Colin Schmidt can beat Pat Ryan, that wow. would be a flip. But right now, not just yet. Uh, 19 would not be. Uh, 22 is Catgo. So what you have in New York, you, you have the possibility. Uh, let's move on over here. Uh, that Republicans could flip mm -hmm. four House races in the state of New York alone. Um, and, and probably based on the strength of... Zeldin's performance yeah. against Hoke. I was going to say, I think Lee Zeldin deserves some credit for making that governor's race as close as it was, and that probably did help a lot of those congressional seats. And so the Republicans had a decent night in New York, not necessarily everywhere else. Brett Baer, how are you? Good, Good to morning. Have you. Good morning. I see you. Good morning. Is it morning or is, is it? it? I mean, it all rolls together. I kind of think of, I saw you at three o'clock out there in the lobby. It rolls so. on. Um, what's your take right now, based on based on what we're seeing and what we think is happening? I think Republicans had a wave in exactly one state, Florida. That's right. Yep. And Florida today looks more like Arkansas. I mean, there is no statewide Democrat for the first time since Reconstruction. And that is a huge story yep. on the Republican side. I think that the Fox polling unit did a fantastic job. And I think we're going to see that our polls were very close mm -hmm. uh, to where we end up. But turnout was Turnout was different. different. It was different. And I think that McCarthy may be right, that at the end of all of this, that he ends up with five, six seat majority. But heading in, uh, 10 or fewer was considered a really bad night mm -hmm. for Republicans. Mm -hmm. Looking at the environment, looking at the inflation, looking at the economy, looking at crime, looking at immigration, I think that Abortion played a bigger role than we think it did in a number of states across the country. Uh, I think that it will be fascinating to see how the president deals with this and what his message is. Because when he makes a message, it will be a signal yep. to everyone about where this administration is You can is imagine going. there was a lot of maneuvering last night at the White House where they were probably grateful that they didn't lose more seats. And they're also trying to think, of where do we go from here? And then everyone's going to try to put something in that speech today. I want to mention one thing about abortion and inflation. So in... Voters had said inflation is most important, but in Pennsylvania, when you look at that, that was th the exit poll out of there for NBC News said that 35 percent of people said that the issue of abortion was their number one issue and inflation was the next at 29 percent. So I, did we miss that in any of the polling or the discussions? And were they the quiet voter, right? You had like the quiet Trump voter from before. Were these the quieter voters or did they just vote early and make their voices heard that way? I think that there's a lot of people who voted early. Uh, I think that in every state, there are more and more people who voted early. 
Uh, in Pennsylvania, for example, if you look back, there's a ton of people who voted in August. Remember, the ruling happens in July. Uh, August happens. You've got all of September. You don't have a debate until October, October. 25th. Yeah, they started, they started voting mm -hmm. September 19th. And so, you know, obviously, we don't know how much that debate changed the dynamic of the race, but we do know, had there been three debates, that might have been a different yeah. story uh, with that. It might have been a different story if it was a debate on September 30th in Pennsylvania. The bottom line is that there's, you know, all these states still out there that we have yet to count. Uh, but it's looking more and more like we're looking at a divided Washington and that we're looking at a very Republican Florida. Mm -hmm. And if Repug Republicans are talking about something, they're talking about the change in Florida and the B way big forward. W big win for DeSantis. You got 67 counties. He won 62 of the 67. Right. I'm extraordinary, Including too. Including Miami-Dade. What he did in Miami-Dade with Cuban-Americans, yeah. that Democratic blue section of the state. Osceola County, we pointed out last night, strong Puerto Rican population just south of Orlando. Orlando. He I was think down I, seven the week before the election. Down seven, DeSantis was, to Gillum four years ago. Mm -hmm. In 2018, right? And he pulled it but to... But competence uh, yeah. mattered, and people saw what he was able to do over those four years, and especially look at that hurricane and mm -hmm. how he handled it. Listen, he he, he won by 34,000 votes that year. Last night, he won by 1.4 million wow. votes. Wow. Right, so that's the story Incredible. in Florida. I think what you're going to hear a lot through for Republican analysts throughout the day is that the top of the ticket hurt them in various states. Um, one would be Pennsylvania. The governor there, not a good performance. One would be Colorado. Joe O'Day, the senator, not a good performance. Michigan, Tudor Dixon was unable to come back and topple Gretchen Whitmer, knowing that Republicans have gone after her now for close to three years. You have different scenarios there, and there's going to be a lot of people that point to the former president, but Joe O'Day was not a presidential endorsement. He was, in fact, pushed the former president away. Uh, Mastriano was. In fact, he had help from Democrats to get through that primary. He was supported. Uh, Tudor Dixon was. I think there's a mixed bag here. Um, but... That all factors in, and there's going to be a lot of talk about the 45th president of the United States and how much that influence or not influence impacted these races, and the closing argument seemed to work. It seemed to work. We didn't think it was going to work. We sat here talking about what threat to democracy and... I was thinking about that last night about President Obama coming in with those last minute rallies and you know we saw kind of a different Obama. It wasn't hope and change Obama. It was he was angry and he was demanding that they get out because democracy was on the line. And he was a good closer for them. He's he's been a good closer. He was a good closer. And in Pennsylvania they can point to, yep. I think, moving the line. Mm -hmm. And President Biden I'd be surprised if he doesn't say that he traveled to Pennsylvania five times. Uh, and Philly, Philly, for all the Philly. grief, uh, yeah. for all the grief he got about not going to other candidates, that was a place that he did go. Obviously, that was their that. OK corral. Yes. Um, let's just pause for a moment here, OK? Because we're waiting on a Senate race in Nevada and a governor's race too, but the governor's in in the lead right now, the Republican. Uh, likewise for Arizona, the Senate and the governor's side. We've got a Senate race in Wisconsin that has not yet been determined, but when we went to bed for 60 minutes, Ron Johnson had the lead. He still has that slim lead as of now, and we believe, just like we left off at 3 a.m., that in Georgia they'll go to a runoff in all likelihood come the 6th of December, unless you get a major change throughout the day today. So you're saying, what if? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Just hit that check mark. That up check there. mark up come there. Over here. Yeah. Go over. Yeah, you got it. You well did done. a fantastic job, by thank the way. Thank you, brother. I mean, you really did. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. We had a really good team. Good. We did. All right. Thank you, Brett. You're going to be with us all day today. All right. Yes, sir. So far, and Dana, we're going to roll on right now. Here we are. All okay. Right. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.